Hey YouTube, Brian Phillips here. Sun's about ready to set. Out working with the John Deere 1025R. Been basically clearing this little path and getting a little bit of final finish grading done. I think I've got it to my liking for now. And we ended up getting rid of one of the two cherry trees that had the uh, the knot, which this is not if you guys didn't see that part. That basically will kill the tree. And we got quite a bit of it on this property, so. But anyway, this bridge is done. Um, it's been run over a number of times and had our first snow on it and got this area cleaned up nicely. It's gonna take a little bit of doing. Just try to make sure these shores don't erode too much. I've got some fresh stones down there and take a little bit of maintenance. But as you can see, the, the old man bridge the ugly one that we built for construction reasons. It's out of there. And our steps are left and finished grade and everything is, is to the point where I'm satisfied with it for the moment. I mean, it is the middle of winter. It's only January. So we'll see how this does. We'll probably have to come out here and broadcast some seed, some grass seed or something like that that will help to give this some ground cover so it doesn't wash away. But we do have some high points and everything. I was able to use the forks to reach out and kind of rip that out of the ground. The old bridge, it worked out real easy. And then I actually push these down. I got to touch up the paint a little bit, but I push those down with the, with the forks. So they're in there really solid now. So the kids can still have that. And I'll, I might paint those brown. It's just PVC pipe. So it's nothing, nothing fancy, but just gives you, gives you a little something to hold on to while you're making your way down in case the ground is soft. I really like the way it's turned out. It's beautiful. I'll give you a shot from down here. Use those handles. Now down here, I don't know if you can tell this, but this is one of the trees we planted here. And then there's logs lining this, this side to keep the bank in. We didn't do that, but it's really cool because it's mossy. We did do that little build up there because we wanted to hear it. And then these are just actually concrete chunks from washout when they're building our house. Just gives us somewhere to stand down here. I think we may have filled this in with a, another log. And obviously it's kind of muddy right here, but that'll, that'll dry up after a little bit. And the primary source of water is going to come over to this side. There's a big stone right here. It's going to make a low point. So the water should go through there. And if it gets to going too fast, it'll it'll run into the sidewall. I've got a big piece of flat stone. I don't know what kind of stone it is, but it might be flat stone. I don't know if that's even type of stone. But yeah, that, that bridge actually went from here across to there. I just am so happy to get rid of it. It's so ugly. And the water just makes its way down to where, I don't know if you guys can hear the waterfall over there. So this water catchment thing I had at the old house, and I got to figure out what I'm going to do with it. It's ugly, ugly as sin, so I want to get rid of it, even though it's kind of behind our burn pile. I mean, our firewood pile. But this was what we wanted. This beautiful crossing that's still functional. Plenty heavy enough capacity. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I have the ballast box on the the 1025R, so that's another. It's about 2,800 pounds without me on it. Uh, when I have the bucket on, I have the uh, forks on it, so it's a little bit lighter right now. Probably 100 pounds, 150 pounds lighter. But with me on it, it's well over 3,000 pounds. Unless I have something wrong in my math, because I have water in the the tires, and when I say water, I mean washer fluid and antifreeze and then uh the ballast box is full of bricks and then of course i got the tools back here the straps and things and then i just keep my little draw bar on there all the time so that actually that adds oh geez probably 30 pounds so i hadn't thought about that but every little bit added every little bit you add is just a little bit more you keep from tipping the tail end up 
but just really pretty the way it turned out and of course there's a house if you didn't know how it sat relative to the house and then uh over here is the neighbor's property that hill that points down to us and you can kind of see where that stake is actually i have to go get the mower and cut some of this grass that's uh we're gonna take this for hay next year uh if we can get the equipment in time but uh i have to find the stake and then whatever i cut up here i'm just gonna throw i'm just gonna pick it up with my hands or a rake and throw it in this little area to keep it from being such a muddy mess and then i'm sure that'll probably propagate a bunch of weeds and probably a lot of this grass too which will not hurt my feelings but you can see where the the stakes are there's a stake right there and then there's another stake way up on the top of the hill and then there should be one ways back i don't know if you're gonna be able to see it but then turning around the other way towards the sun you can see there's stakes right inside of the, the pole there so that's kind of where our property line stops on this side then it goes back to that second tree line. This is one tree line. And then that's the start of the tree line. We go back to the back of that tree line, almost all the way back. I think there's probably three or four trees back past it. So we just love it out here. It's beautiful. And the country living is very expensive. <laughs> but we love it. And it's worth it. It's what we've been working for for a long time. And we'll be working for it for another 30 years at least. But anyway, we got the bridge. Now we can uh, hopefully take hay when we need to get across here. So, 1025R. Some guys say they're not very capable, but I'll tell you what, when you gotta get through tight spots, you need a small machine. And a small machine that's somewhat capable is very nice to have. And I cannot believe how I'd have done it without, I don't even think I could have done half of this stuff without it. I got started with this and the day I was pushing, not this log, but the middle log and the farther log. I was pushing it around with my zero turn, my Z655. And uh, I then up a bracket and I called up John Deere. And the salesman I talked to, he told me, oh, well, that bracket's $144. And then the sticker that says Z655 is $11. And I said, oh boy, <laughs> that was the day I decided to buy a tractor. So here we are. And someday there'll be a bigger one probably, somewhere, but I'm going to have to win the lotto first because I'm still paying for this one for a few months. <laughs> anyway, guys, you came for the bridge and you got a lot, lot more. Really happy you stuck with us through it. More RC projects coming. This is a really long series, so thanks for sticking in there. You know me, I like to go on and on. But as far as I'm concerned, I could watch these videos over and over again just see all the beautiful areas and look how long my shadow is. <laughs> my head is out there and that's probably 300 feet away. I'll take you back here as we close. So this, this tree is not dead, by the way. That's sticking up here. It's going straight up. There's multiple trees actually come off of that. Pretty cool. But there's a lot of rot in there. So we'll see how that turns out. Got some mushrooms growing there. But we'll see if it lives. I don't think it's going to die right away. And that one's just a beautiful tree. Really big. I believe that's a hackberry. And we love this area where the root system has created these little waterfalls. You can hear the waterfalls starting. What's incredible to me is how fast all these trees come back. I mean, it's incredible. There's a burn pile we've been working on. There's a the bridge up there. There's Alice. It's kind of a long ways down, so I don't want to get down there. It's slick right now. Looks like we eroded a little bit more away from this. This was out to about here. You can see where I put that sod. That sod, the sod guys had kind of sloppily thrown that back into a bush line, and you can see where I've taken and made little steps. That's really helped a lot with the erosion. Let me just see if I can hold on to this tree here, this hackberry. It's so pretty down there. And you can see we got a little bit of erosion here. 
and then we're going to have a lot of erosion here, which, which is a little bit scary because we've got these huge trees we don't want to lose. And this little area is just so beautiful. That's the tree we took. It was dead. That's the tree we shot down. You still have quite a bit of remnants of it down there, just kind of helping to give you something to stand on when you walk down there. And I have a lot of cleanup to do in this bowl. Big old root structure there of a tree that's dead and gone. This one's kind of holding up that wall, so I'm probably going to have to leave it there, even though I've been trying to get rid of it. But it is really cool down here. You can see all these trees that are leaned. That's where the erosion's happening. This one goes that. This one goes that. That's the way you can tell which side of the creek they're on. And the chicken coop in the house. All right, guys. Thanks for watching this project. It's been fun sharing it with you. We've got more projects like this coming. Don't know exactly what they're going to entail, but lots of cool stuff to share. And obviously there'll be lots of radio controlled action as usual. And we're just glad that you're here with us. World's best audience. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe.